Well, I um, I've been teaching Scriabin lately, and he has a he has a problem. He had very small hands, but he wrote music, um, which is much easier to play with very large hands. So I decided to start writing a few few pieces in the style of Scriabin, so that my students would have something they could play, and um, not. And then I sort of branched out. And then not all the pieces in this list are for octogenarians or for anyone who has trouble reaching an octave, but wants to play something advanced. So I've got about 25 of these pieces I've been working on. And um, the second piece is something I like yes, to play for myself. Pardon? Oh, it's something I like to play for myself and um, to sort of calm me down when I read about what's going on in the world. And I'm looking forward to a chance to share it with other people. So. Thank you. Um, let me make sure I'm all ready. All right, here we go.
Lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, Sylvia may have wanted to say something, but she said her internet was spotty. I, I am here. Oh, yay. <laughs> yay. Give me just a second. I'll spotlight you. Okay. Um, here we go. All Good. right. Thank you so much for coming today. What a wonderful concert. Very, very fine music. If, if you need to go, um, you may leave at this time. I want to thank our performers, but we do have some a little more time if you'd like to stay and visit with Peter Arnstein. I've, I'm going to start it out and ask some questions. Um, and just a reminder, if you do have to leave, that we have another concert on November 19th. And I hope that you'll join us again for that concert. All right, Peter. I've got some questions for you. I, in reading your biography, it's very impressive. Uh, he's won uh, competitions both as a uh, pianist and, and as a, a composer and uh, is accompanying around the Twin Cities. And I see also that you have several CDs available, uh, including uh, CDs of your solo piano concerts, including live from Eidenberg, live from <clears throat> Illinois, live from British Columbia, and your latest CD uh, is Serenity 2. And I'm going to promote you a little bit here. <laughs> if people <laughs> wanted to um, get hold of uh, one of your CDs, how would they do that? Uh, with all your and I'm and some of them, you know, are your compositions. So I'm going to give it to you. Good question. Uh, usually I just sell them at my concerts. Of course, I'm not giving any concerts at the moment. Um, but they could always write to me, I guess, uh, um, my email address. Uh, if, and you could do a Care of Thursday Musical if you're not a member. If you're right. a member, you'll get uh, a membership directory with his information in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how how many uh, how many years have you been doing CDs? Um, let's see. When did they start making CDs? <laughs> <laughs> they still make CDs. I don't know if people have CD players anymore. <laughs> That's true. A long, a long time. A long, uh, long time. Twenty there years, is. something like that. Okay, and um, so if. And if if you if you could unmute yourself, I'm not uh, un. What do you call it when you're on video? Make yourself visible if you have a question for him. Um, and uh, he's a busy person around the Twin Cities. Uh, plays for as a pianist and a harpsichord with the Minnesota Orchestra, and has accompanied. Uh, people on the college music faculties and many uh, members of the professional orchestras. And uh, Peter, is there anything more you'd like to say about your compositions? Um, Especially the last one, I, the fugue. I thought that was really interesting. Oh. Well, I- I'm on the spot here. <laughs> I seem to be um, teaching fugues to people, so I- um, to write them. I better put some in my own music so that um, I can prove that I can do it myself. Uh, it's a tough, tough one to do fugues. But I, th I think a fugue is a pretty good representation of the time we're in with all the intricacies and the many, you know, in interweaving of, of things. So is there anybody... Uh, else that would like to ask questions or Peter, I, I'll let you talk more if you want. I don't want to hog the whole thing. Michael Santor, you got anything you'd like to ask him or <laughs> putting people on the spot here? Maybe Michael. Shaking his head. If you do have something to say and you're uncomfortable being on video and you'd like to use the reaction 
button in the bottom of your screen. You may also do that and raise your hand. I'll catch you and put you on video, spotlight you so that people can know who's talking, or you can pop it into the chat and I'm happy to read that off for you. All right. This is our maiden voyage in doing this. So um, thank you, Tara. We do have a question in the chat. Um, could you speak a bit about your interest in writing music in the style of previous composers? Your white writing and playing is wonderful. Um, well, it's hard not to write in the style of previous composers because I'm playing them all the time. <laughs> and um, the very first piece I wrote was in the style of Clementi because I was playing his sonatinas. So, um, I don't always do it on purpose, but sometimes I do it on purpose. And um, the ones I was, the Scriabin ones I was doing today where it was on purpose because uh, he didn't write enough music for people with small hands. So I wanted to expand his repertoire some. And um, sometimes when I'm writing in the style of someone else, my wife will come in and, and say, I'm, I'm I'll say I'm writing Scrabin or I'm writing Chopin and she'll say, didn't they already write it? And, um, but they didn't always. Sometimes they, sometimes they had more ideas that they couldn't get to while they were alive. So I'm helping them out a little bit. <laughs> Doesn't, so. Are there any other questions from anybody? I think so. So it was a great fun to hear you today, Peter. And and uh, I get to play for once. I haven't played anything for anybody in six months. So yeah, sort of. I hear that quite a bit from our musicians. It's a dead zone in music. And or, or the, we're the trying thing. to we're trying to make that not be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> by doing these Zoom concerts. That, that's the main thing I hear is uh, from our musicians is that they really miss uh, performing for audiences and just miss sharing their music because it's so much a part of their heart and their, and their being, so. Well, thank you for so, the Is there anything else here? Yeah. If there's nothing else, uh, again, I thank everyone for coming. It's great to see faces here. And uh, we hope to see you again in November on the 19th. Again, we've got an outstanding program. And Peter, thanks for being willing to talk afterwards and being a good sport about answering questions here. So, sure. all right. Just before we wrap up, um, Bob Koopman is still here. So if anybody has-